Centripetal acceleration explained. Let's uh, go back and look at your centripetal acceleration lab and uh, derive an equation for centripetal acceleration. We knew from previous work that the centripetal acceleration uh, vector went toward the center. And that's because the only way to keep an object in circular motion is continuously pull it toward the center. But now we want to find out how much uh, or how big this centripetal acceleration vector is. So we're going to first of all take a look at what happened when we varied the radius of uh, our circular path and see what happened to centripetal acceleration. And when we did increase the radius and got the radius to get bigger and bigger and bigger, what we found out for a given speed, so we kept this object going the same speed as we increased the radius here. And for the same speed as we increased the radius, the acceleration decreased. So we have an inverse variation here. In other words, as the radius increases, the centripetal acceleration decreases. And this is our uh, initial equation here for centripetal acceleration. We don't know what this constant is yet, and we'll get back to that in just a couple of minutes. After each one of these slides, make sure that you pause uh, when you see the pause video marker and uh, take notes, uh, careful notes, on each one of these slides coming up. Now, the other part of your lab, we uh, increased the speed but kept the radius the same. So this radius stayed the same, but now we increased the speed that we were going around in a circular path. And when we did that, uh, keeping the radius the same and it, the speed getting bigger and bigger, what we found out is the acceleration increased but it increased dramatically. It formed this parabola. It increased at an increasing rate here. Uh, we also discovered that the only difference between positive and negative here was the direction. So if we went around the circle counterclockwise here and, and we called that positive, then this was what we got. And when we went around the opposite way, we called that uh, negative velocity and uh, we all, we got this still the increasing acceleration in time it's increasing and increasing rate since we got a parabola we know that that is uh, the acceleration is proportional to the square of the of the speed so if we double the speed we quadruple the acceleration and we have this constant again here though but this is a different k than the previous slides k. We're going to see that in a minute, but there is this proportionality constant in the mix. So now we have our two variables, our radius and our speed, and how they affected acceleration each. And let's see how we can combine both of those for our combined acceleration equation. So now we have our two equations that uh, we've derived from our lab work, our experiment. We have one that's related to radius with this constant that we didn't know about. And we have one right here related to changing the speed of the object in circular motion. And we have this constant. Again, these k's are not the same k's. We'll see that in a second here. So we're going to combine or mix these two into our single equation for centripetal acceleration. So the radius here we know goes in the denominator because as it got bigger the acceleration got smaller and we have that inverse relationship and we have our v squared in the numerator here because as the speed increased the acceleration increased at an increasing rate and so that goes in the numerator and that really is our overall equation. So what happened to the k's? Well, it's kind of interesting. This k right here is really the v squared, and this k right here is really the 1 over r from over here. So uh, we've taken those into account by mixing these two equations, and we get our final equation for centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is equal to the speed squared divided by the radius and it's measured in, of course, acceleration is measured in meters per second per second. You can also use meters per second squared. So, what does this equation mean? 
Hmm. Let's actually look at that in a little more detail and uh, get an intuitive understanding of this. In order to get an intuitive understanding, let's first of all check out a motorcycle racing and uh, how it maneuvers in, uh, in and around different radius corners. Before we do that though, make sure you pause and take great notes from this slide. Here's some motorcycles uh, racing and uh, we can get a kind of a feel for uh, centripetal acceleration from this. Notice that on the straightaway here uh, and even on these gradual corners they can keep a lot of speed. They can stay but then when you come to a tight corner here they have to really slow down. Those tight radius turns require they, they slow their speed way way down but then on the more gradual corners here and on the straightaways they can really pick up their speed because they don't need as much uh, centripetal force to hold them uh, in circular motion. So it's the friction of the wheels right here that is providing that centripetal force that we'll be talking about. And again, the tight corners here, they have to slow way down, uh, but then on the more gradual turns and on the straightaways, they can keep really good speed. So we'll check out why that is. So Back to our equation, we saw the motorcycles. Let's take a look at radius's effect and, and try to understand that a little bit better. So I have two motorcycles right here represented by these little rectangular boxes. And uh, they have different radi radius, radii that they're uh, going around here, different curves. What we're going to do in this first one is we just want to see the effect of radius. So we're going to keep the speed the same for both. So this is not like a merry-go-round. On a merry-go-round, this had to go twice as fast to get around the same amount of time. That's not what we're looking at here. What we're looking at here is these have the same speed and are going around different radii turns here. So if we take this first one, we can see that it'll go around in uniform circular motion with a constant speed and get back all the way to here in a certain amount of time. So this one changes direction 360 degrees in a uh, period of time. Since this one's going only ha going the same speed but has to go around twice as far here, it only gets halfway around in the same amount of time. So this one right here only changed its direction 180 degrees. So centripetal acceleration, which is all about changing the direction of, of these motorcycles here, uh, changed this one's direction twice as much as this one. Therefore, the radius right here, since uh, it's smaller, creates a bigger centripetal acceleration. Smaller radius, bigger centripetal acceleration because it changed its direction twice as much. So again, bigger radius. Now with a bigger radius out here, we get a smaller centripetal acceleration because the direction, the same amount of time, the direction is only changed half as much. So hopefully you understand that relationship intuitively a little bit better. Of course, you can also understand it that uh, the tighter the turn, the more you'd feel. Now, let's take a look at the speed part. With the speed part here, we're going to stay with the same radius, but now we're going to go at a particular speed, V1, and we only get to here in a certain amount of time. We turn one quarter turn in a certain amount of time, and uh, it's a pretty small speed, and so we don't feel uh, a whole lot going at that small speed, so there's a small acceleration, and we've only changed our direction um, one, uh, 90 degrees for a quarter of a turn. In the same amount of time, if we go twice as fast, if we go twice as fast here, in the same amount of time, we're going to change our direction twice as much. But Mr. Bemke, why is it squared? This uh, change our speed twice as fast? Why isn't this just twice the acceleration? Why is it four times the acceleration since 2 squared is 4? Why is it four times the acceleration? Well, two things are happening here. We're changing our direction twice as much, but we're also changing our speed twice as much. So changing speed is also acceleration. So we've doubled our speed, and we've doubled our change in direction with this increased speed. 
So we've doubled directional change and we've doubled our overall speed and that's why it is squared. So hopefully you understand uh, this a little bit more intuitively. And obviously if you're going faster around a corner, you do feel a heck of a lot more centripetal acceleration. Pause and take, a, uh, take great notes on this slide. And Scratch's parting thought. And good luck going around obstacles as you strive for continuous improvement.